welcome back to my series of Quentin Tarantino films, where I'll be talking about Quentin Tarantino films leading up to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I will be reviewing for my 600 subscriber special. Now today I'm going to be talking about two films. Yes, I did say two films in one video. I'm going to be reviewing Kill Bill Volume 1 and Volume 2. I was going to review Kill Bill Volume 1 and only Volume 1, but I figured I need to give respect to Volume 2 as well because it deserves the same amount of respect the first film does has. And these two films are revolutionary. They're probably one of the most revolutionary films in not only the early 2000s, but of all time, I'd say. So enough with the chit-chat. Let's get started with reviewing these movies. First off, let's talk about Kill Bill Volume 1. So Kill Bill was released back in 2003 when I was just a baby technically and stars Uma Thurman. And in this film, the story revolves around a woman who is out for revenge on her assassins who apparently betrayed her. And her new mission is to go after her traitors and their leader, Bill, which leads her to become an assassin in this blood-shedding, action-packed thrill ride. Like I said, both of the Kill Bill movies are, a highly re are highly revolutionary in cinema history. Kill Bill Volume 1 was a huge hit when it first came out. Critics loved it. People loved it. It was one of the best films to ever come out in the 2000s. And definitely one of Quentin Tarantino's finest films. Since his recent films in the 90s, like Pulp Fiction and Jackie Brown, Kill Bill was a highly satisfying film. And it's not going to be a surprise if I were to say that Kill Bill Volume 1 is one of my all-time favorite films. Because it is. It is one of my favorite all-time favorite... It is one of my all-time favorite films. Like, you can never really go wrong with movies like Kill Bill. This film is filled with so much narrative to it. And if you really do focus on what the film actually means and what the film leads up to, it's very fascinating. Easily the best performance in this film is from Uma Thurman, and this is definitely the best work that I've seen from her since Pulp Fiction. Uma Thurman does a phenomenal job as the bride in this film. And the opening to Kill Bill, I'm gonna be completely honest, the opening is some of the best I've seen in cinema. Where the iron siren starts playing in the background. Yes, you know which theme I'm talking about. This one. Yeah, you know exactly, you know exactly that theme. I'm pretty sure uh, almost everyone has heard this theme before. Even if you've probably never seen Kill Bill. This, the iron siren still sounds some, could sound somewhat familiar to you. And that's, like I said, this film is revolutionary. This movie absolutely brings you into its world. And like I said, Tarantino is a master at crafting that. He makes you understand the characters that are in his films. Unlike any other film director, because Tarantino delivers his own style. And this film is over 100%, 110% Tarantino. This film is covered with Tarantino it seriously is. You can watch films like Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2 and instantly tell Tarantino made this movie. He made it. Because it's not just the use of, it's just not how the characters are written and stuff like that. It's the story itself and the dialogue that's in the film. The direction, the details, the way scenes and story telling are crafted in this film. The way how everything is set up to lead to a conclusion or another part in the film because Tarantino is such a master at crafting and moving certain scenes and moments of one single story and switching them around and you could still easily connect with everything and know what's what's happening now I gotta talk about the performance in this performances in this film. Aside from Uma Thurman, let's mention the other actors in this film. David Carradine, by the way, rest in peace, did a phenomenal job in this movie. He is so freaking good as Bill in this movie, and he is known. He's pretty known. He, he's pretty known in cinema, too. He was pretty known 
Uh, he was pretty known for working on other films and stuff like that, like maybe during the 70s. But I really gotta say, this is probably one of his best performances. He kills it as Bill in this movie. And it's sad that he's no longer in this world, but rest in peace, man. I also really liked Michael Madsen. He was really great. And Lucy Liu, she's probably, she's pr most likely the most likely the second best actress in this film. And all in all, the performances just make you feel like you're in a different world. It doesn't make you feel like you're just watching a movie. They make you feel a part of the narratives that are delivered in this film and the experience and how everything builds up in this film. You can feel the same way as you watch Kill Bill Volume 1 over and over and over again and it never gets it never gets tiring. And easily the best thing that revolves around this movie is vengeance. Because seriously, that's what this movie is all about. It's about Uma Thurman, Uma Thurman ki literally kicking the crap out of the, out of the people who, bet who betrayed her. And her main reach is Bill. And seeing everything unfold in this experience through many details and many twists and turns. And many action sequences and phenomenal direct and performances it is just satisfying before I end this review of Kill Bill volume 1 I have to talk about the 33 Yakuza scene that scene is just so good it is so good it absolutely gets you pumped when the bride is just finally getting her revenge and so much Oh my god, there is so much bloodshed in the 33 Yakuza scene. If you haven't seen Kill Bill, there is so much blood in that scene where she is finally getting her revenge against the people who, bet who betrayed her. It's honestly very satisfying to watch because you get to see the bride slice and dice her enemies. And it's very well directed. And it's the, one of the best moments in a Tarantino film, honestly. But yeah, if you haven't seen Kill Bill Volume 1, I will promise you there is a lot of blood in the 33 Yakuza scene. And you'll know once, it's, once it occurs. You'll know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> blood, blood, blood. Wow. And it was satisfying, like I said. Like, this movie is just so freaking awesome. I love this movie. Kill Bill Volume 1 is a highly revolutionary film on all standards. Like I said, back in the day, critics loved it, people loved it, we, they, we still love it today. It's one of my personal favorite Quentin Tarantino films, and it's one of my all-time favorite films in general. And... <laughs> you technically already know the grade I'm going to give this film. Kill Bill Volume 1 gets an A+. Thank you guys so much for watching this review for Kill Bill Volume 1. Now, I'm going to be talking about Kill Bill Volume 2. Which, again, was directed by Quentin Tarantino and was actually released a year after Qu um, Quentin Tarantino's debut of Kill Bill Volume 1. This film was released in 2004, and this, and this film technically tells... And this film takes place after Kill, Kill Bill Volume 1, where, where the bride finally has gotten rid of the 33 Yakuza's. And in this film, she is on her way to kill bill once and for all to finish the job this is the last film there is no doubt that kill bill volume 2 is one of the best sequels of all time this film is just as good as the first kill bill it has amazing sequences it has great storytelling great details uma thurman, thurman is back and it's a fantastic thrill ride it, and that's what i loved about this movie it knows how to be a sequel it wasn't just a movie that wanted to be made. And this film technically does have a purpose for existing, since Kill Bill Volume 1 focused on the bride going after the her traitors, the 33 Yakuza's. And Kill Bill Volume 2 focuses on the bride going after Bill. Nobody but Bill. And I guess it sounds a little too dramatic to say nobody but Bill, because she does have her moments where she's killing other people in this film. But, her main goal in this film is no one but Bill. And this mission is probably a little more exciting than the first Kill Bill. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because the first Kill Bill was very revolutionary for its narrative and the storytelling and so much detail that was put in that film. 
Kill Bill Volume 2 is a little more, focused a, a little more on entertainment, which I loved. And yes, there is still narrative delivered in this film. And like I, and once again, the direction that's in film, in this film is on point. Michael Madsen returns in this film and he is phenomenal. He does, I think he is better in this film than he is in the first Kill Bill. And he is really great in the first Kill Bill, but he really does a phenomenal job in this film. Daryl Hannah really does a great job in this film too. I really love the sequences when her and the bride were fighting, especially with the Black Mamba that was in the cabin with them. And if you've seen Kill Bill Volume 2, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I have to, and I'm going to spoil a scene. If you haven't seen Kill Bill Volume 2, leave this review right now. <laughs> the moment where, the scene where the bride finds out that L Driver killed Boss Ozawa, who was the master of the bride. And she did that because Ozawa literally took out her eye. Hence is why she wears an eye patch. And then for a moment, they're fighting and fighting and out <laughs> and build up music starts to happen. And we can already get an idea of what is going to occur. And yes, it does. She literally takes out Elle's eye out and she screams in agony as the bride walks out of the cabin. It is so B.A. and I think is probably, possibly the most B.A. scene I have ever seen in a movie. Kill Bill Volume 2 is a fresh sequel. This film, just like the first Kill Bill, is always moving. And many things happen as the film progresses. And the things that build up and build up a lot more as the film progress, it progresses. It, it, it just works so well in both of the Kill Bill movies. And Quentin Tarantino is a master, again, at crafting tension and suspense and excitement. And here, he's, he was able to make a highly worthy sequel. And the scenes where she, the bride actually makes her way home to her own daughter and Bill, it was honestly very sweet to watch. And then once things get to the concluding moments, it's starts to get very satisfying like that. Both of the Kill Bill movies are just vengeful movies, but they are highly satisfying to watch. And it's because Tarantino brings so much care to all of his movies that he makes. And these two films are some of the films that show that Tarantino loves movies. And he loves making movies. And it's a fact when I say this, no one in this world, no other director in this world makes films like Quentin Tarantino. No one. Not even the best director. And Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2, especially 2, are so well crafted that they are so highly memorable. And they are so rewatchable. You can watch them over and over and over again and love them even more. Because they're well told with, they're, they're well told and they have phenomenal performances with fantastic directing, incredible twists and turns and action sequences, and there's so much use of Tarantino dialogue. And it's seriously incredible. It is fantastic and phenomenal in how much suspense and tension were built into both of these films, especially this one. And a spoiler I'm going to say about Kill Bill Volume 2, but the scene where the bride is getting ready to kill Bud, and the attack back backfires and Bud shoots the bride and he ties her up and throws her underground. And there's so much tension and suspense build up into that scene and you're wondering, how the heck is she going to get out of this? Which she eventually does, but still, it's so, so much in su suspense and tension is built up to the audience. And it's genius. And then when she finally gets out of situations like that, you absolutely get relieved. Kill Bill Volume 2 is one of the best sequels I have ever seen. And it's one of the best sequels ever. It definitely is more, in, I, I would say a little more entertaining than the first Kill Bill. Than the first Kill Bill. And the Kill, Kill Bill Volume 1 is filled with entertainment. But it is mostly focused, focusing on its narrative and its storytelling with 
phenomenal performances, like I said. Which what films should have. But Kill Bill Volume 2 also does have narrative, but this film is just so entertaining. And extremely satisfying to watch. And definitely one of my all-time favorite films. And Quentin Tarantino seriously needs to keep making more films. Because this is one of those directors that I don't want to stop making films. I want to see Quentin Tarantino keep on making films. Tarantino, please, please don't stop making films. Just keep going at it because you are a master. You seriously are. So Quentin Tarantino is one of my favorite directors of all time and <sighs> make more films dude because these two films are one of your finest films. Kill Bill Volume 2 absolutely gets an A+. Now you may be wondering since I gave both of these films the same grade which one do I love more? I love Kill Bill Volume 1 just a tad more. Kill Bill Volume 1 is excellent. There's nothing wrong with that film. It's one of the most revolutionary films. Along with Kill Bill Volume 2. I love Kill Bill Volume 1 because it focuses more on narrative. It is entertaining. Highly entertaining. But it has narrative and such great writing put into it. With phenomenal performances. Kill Bill Volume 2 is a very, very excellent film as well. And that film focuses more on entertaining you. And they're just so dead. They're just so darn good. I love both of these films. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching my review of Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2. Um, look forward to my last two reviews that I will be doing of Quentin Tarantino movies, which are Jackie Brown and Death Proof, leading up to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Can't wait. I'm so excited. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this review. You guys are the best. I love every single one of you. Look forward to more reviews that will be coming very soon. And as always, if you're new here, and you like what you see here, why not hit that subscribe button to join the Eli B slash 520 community. And I will see you next time. Peace out.